Hi, called Puni Piso here. Why we, as educated adults, believe in irrational, retarded things as if they were reality? Why? They say it does not say you won't get bit. So the important thing is that when you die, you've been obedient to God. There are as many, many gods as the brain can create. The snakes are gods, rocks are, are gods, all over millennia. There is no only one. Otherwise, God really truly existed. But no, the brain creates so many as the snake handlers that believe the snake is a god. The Christian have a snake on the cross. It represents health, which is equivalent to the penis, by the way. Jandar Singh will have the honor of being reincarnated as a rodent, fulfilling his sacred goal. Happens in the brain. It's going to be reincarnated. It means I'll stay within this temple to be reborn as a rat. A pluribus unum out of many, one. Over six million years ago, our brain started developing the hominid for survival. There were many, many factors that made the, the primate brain began evolve as a defense, a survival mechanism, and uh, it's all in the limbic system. We can see that today. And it began to create God. Many, many factors developed the brain. One of the things, one of the main factors, I believe, was the ingestion of entheogens, uh, psychotropic substances. And uh, the brain constantly began evolving and we created God with our brains. As you can see, many, even a rock would be considered a God. Thanks so we didn't want to consider They God. say Thanks. God is the answer. How this is what we create thoughts with. And chemicals are affected by this. Prayers don't work. Chemicals do. Try them. Here are different medicines that this Christ psychotic ignorant people can actually, you know, uh, take. They have a mild form of schizophrenia that I call Christ psychosis. Well, is it all in here? In our brains. And we very much look like this. We're a, we're a more improved version of this. All this created with the brain. We are crazy apes. Sorry, Christians. That's a fact. And I find that psychedelics helps me with exactly that. T. Ferry and Burning Dan feel that they're seeing the world for the first time. It stems from a group of cells in the brain called the locus ceruleus. Yeah. Science! It's the brain! Right there! Nichols calls it the novelty detector are more popular than Christianity and Islam. Yeah, and for its followers, voodoo is more than just a religion. In the same way you speak of a Buddhist life. society or a Judeo-Christian society, you can speak of a voodoo society. And within that world, one finds completeness. But exactly. you can speak of exactly. as, as a cultural thing as much as, a, as it is a, a religion. Exactly. Yes, we rebuke you, Satan. You release all the demons. Go, 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 go! Go! Get back into these retards over there! <laughs> As evolved, mutated primates, um, we began to gather knowledge, collective knowledge, through millennia. But there was always, always the God delusion, the psychosis of God interfering with our um, with acquisition of knowledge. So anytime we didn't understand something, there was God. There was the supernatural. We created the supernatural, a psychosis, that interfered with everything. It's still with us today. That's just on every culture, every culture in this planet, every culture has a God, a belief. First, he concocts a drug from the local flora called Yopo. Its active ingredient, DMT, is one of the world's most powerful natural hallucinogens using a bamboo pipe. The drug takes immediate effect because it's snorted rather than ingested. 
When I take Yopo, I see the gods and goddesses, and they give me medicine. And the people receive medicine and powers through me, the shaman. Your brain rejects these uh, irrational beliefs that keep invading our brains, the belief of God and nonsense, and we study and we study science, and we keep our, our uh, feet on the ground of reality, and then we have like the scientists, this researcher in the same cells. The problem is that there aren't that many of them. And in fact, in a devastating disease like muscular dystrophy, where the muscle is weakened by a genetic lesion, robbing it of an essential protein and causing it to be fragile. Every time it's used, it actually breaks and has to be replaced. The stem cells can keep up with this for a while, but eventually there just aren't enough. And now, this brilliant, brilliant scientist doing research on the stem cells attempt to curing a lot of disorders. He, she has a mentally healthy attitude or a good brain. In other words, an atheist. If this lady was a Christian or infected with Christ psychosis, there's just no way she could understand science that well. You know, they see imaginary friends. And um, she probably would have been burned at the stake, you know, just a couple hundred years ago. So this is important. People that believe in God, they have this metamagical thinking. They have a problem, uh, like schizotypal disorder, and it's obvious in this 21st century. Quite similar to schizophrenia, having common multisyllabic words, that concreteness at the level of abstraction, these are people who tend towards extremely fundamentalist, concrete interpretations of religious events. Sarable, this could be measured down to the minute. People alive who were once dead, this is not a metaphor for keeping the spirit going, this is an exact description of the events. We begin to see where we're heading here. What gets a very mild version in terms of the loose associations, in terms of the concreteness of associations, the social detachment, and most of all, the metamagical thinking. And this is now a standard diagnostic category in psychiatry to have a schizotypal personality. Then when the brain, despite the education received, succumbs to uh, religious psychosis and believing God and all this nonsense, these are the results. Look at that! They go back to the infancy when they were little babies. Totally religious. Speaking in the tongues of angels. We create gods and the paranormal and all that with our brains. And 40,000 years ago, the ingestion of psychotropic substances, drugs like peyote, uh, another anthra, and others, uh, make people see God. And especially the shamans. The priests, these people that uh, began to experiment and taking sometimes by accident these things, they became shamans. Over time, many of them became the leaders because they could see God and speak to the spirits. And they still are with us today. You take drugs, you see God. Here's an example. This is a great to me. It feels like having access to the intelligence of the universe. Yeah, yeah, for you. The, the, the brain is the universe inside of us. For we take drugs. Christians, use of a hallucinogenic drug would be considered taboo. But for the followers of Santo Daime, it's integral to their religious lives. Right. Of a recognized religion. Yes, it is a sacrament. What the Brazilian. The person is deluded, infected with a religious psychosis, they walk on their knees, and despite the education, uh, to, uh, because of the imaginary friend in the sky, uh, they speak in tongues, uh, like the clip I just show, and all the rest of psychosis. And uh, it is a disastrous, uh, intellectually stagnating disorder, the disorder of believing God. Actor Eck referred to shamans as being healed madmen in the 1940s. Anthropologist named Kroeber, who started the anthro department in Berkeley and was one of the grand old men in the field. And the priests are the same thing. Shamanism is about. Preachers are the, the same. The shaman displays his possession by a spirit by publicly reenacting his specific personal experience, that of a man suffering from a particular mental affliction. 
His, his journey through space and time thus became a dramatic ritual and served as the prototype for all future concepts of the religious road of perfection. And they, they believe in God, don't they? How do you call these people that believe in imaginary friends? Deluded, deluded. We created with the brain. Idiots. You don't see it. Of course. Look at these idiots here. They're banging their head against a Roman temple. Right there. They should be in a mental institution too. Look at this. Delusions are created when the brain malfunctions. Either by disease, uh, you know, trauma, and also by ingestion entheogens. You take, you know, uh, peyotl, LSD, some other drugs, and uh, you can actually see the gods. Primitive men used drugs over 40,000 so years ago, and that's the way the delusions of God and paranormal were created. It's all in the brain. God doesn't exist. We create gods with the brain. People use uh, antiogens. But world's greatest thinkers also journeyed to the mind's darker side. That's right. The mystical world of spirits right. and visions. That's the only way you can see God is by ingesting drugs. Effect was. They use antiogens. These Zinian mysteries were once famed throughout the Greek and Roman world. That came in... Uh, the drinking of a sacred potion uh -huh. and that those who emerged from that initiation right were profoundly changed in as you show in this uh, clip uh, there is evidence uh, religious beliefs would happen that are created in the brain um, begun over 40,000 years ago many, many years ago, and then organized religion uh, was formed much later, you know, in Egypt and other different cultures, trying to make sense of the world and themselves. And uh, here's a sample, another part of the world, Mexico, you know, they have the same thing, created gods with the brain, created their religion. Mysterious civilization of the Mayans. It's easy to think that the occult is just myths and fiction, but when you start to apply archaeology and science, you can really get to the truth and the nuggets of, of real fact that underlie all of them. That's right. In six yeah. other gods lived in the darkness underground. That's right. The gods of death. Yeah. All created by the brain. In a, in a, Everything. Decorated all of their temples with glyphs and yeah. Uh, and by taking and drugs, entheogens, which has given us a, an incredible insight into their life and culture. Every religious Even cult also, had. Your, is a mysterious 16th your, century your psychotropic substances. The Popol, the Popol Vuh is a sacred text transcribed in the 16th century yeah. from ancient hieroglyphs. Like Bible. It describes a mythical civilization, an occult underworld known as Shibalba. Yeah. Shibalba is the Mayan underworld. Yeah. The place where all the souls want to get to to be able to enjoy the afterlife. Yeah. All religions have sacred so texts. You know, LSD and some other substances can actually make you see and feel God, spirits, and everything. Look at this. Study the effects of its molecular structure in the brain. We think that it activates a type of brain receptor that's known as a serotonin 2A receptor. That receptor is actually located on cells in the frontal cortex and is involved in the computations that, that help us to visualize and interpret the reality around us. Perception, emotion, appetite, and sleep are all affected by its fluctuations and fits almost like a key into the serotonin receptors. The LSD does, yeah. Stimulating their activity subtly or profoundly. interesting thing is is that religious folks they have a weak brains they have a problem with the brains they are born with this anomaly we all actually we're all crazy we're all born with the same but the religious people are weak brains and uh, uh, they get affected by belief by faith and, and that's despite the intelligence can be very educated but if they believe in imaginary Fred is real they believe uh, you know in a resurrecting zombie is real uh, boy 
you know, it's, it causes this dopamine and they will believe it and they act upon it. That's the reason you see this, uh, these people uh, going to church and praying and to the imaginary friends and walking on their knees. It is a psychosis. It's very, it's very sad this is happening in this 21st century. Walking on their knees so a zombie grant them a wish is no different than uh, claiming the space alien abducted us. You know, the problem is uh, religious people face psychotics. Uh, they get taking advantage of. In other words, they buy the Brooklyn Bridge, paying more and more for it each time. And the, actually, the fundamentalist uh, Baptist ministers that cry psychotics, they actually do believe in this nonsense, but they want money, money, money. Some are con artists, but this is what happens. And these people should pay taxes, and they don't. Just like oh, the yeah, there's prosperity. People are not giving you money on the retards. <laughs> the question is, do they represent something out in the world or inside the brain? Here at Laurentian University in Sudbury, Canada, people are having these strange experiences every day. Scientists are triggering them with, of all things, magnets. Our brains are not affected only by chemicals, but also by electromagnetism. Magnets, magnetism in the brain affecting the temporal lobes and uh, as Michael Shermer, this brilliant uh, man, is uh, is indicating, you know, uh, put magnets in the brain, and they create uh, these sensations, this believe in God, just like uh, like drugs do. This happened in ancient times. This reason people start uh, the cry psychotics to experience all these visions and things, electromagnetism, and it's in the atmosphere. We create God with our brains. Sorry. Belong in mental institutions. The problem is, is that people with particular religious viewpoints. No, the problem is that religious beliefs are not defined for a psychosis. And it is. Can inject religion into the science class. That's right. No. Evolution is widely accepted by the scientific community. Disorder. As the basis for teaching biology to oh. children. Place those idiots in, in in of silence. The theory, like gaps and. The big problem is the elephant in the room. Nobody sees religious beliefs for the psychosis it is. It's a mental illness. It's a form of schizotypal disorder. And not, not until uh, scientists and neurologists mention this and define it for religion for what it is, we'll still have the problem. Saying, oh, religious beliefs. No, it is a psychosis. We should put these people in, uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, mental institutions to actually help them, define it, and do some uh, some uh, uh, corrections there and some cure for these uh, people that are actually retarded and infected the whole world. The insanity nobody sees. Religious beliefs. Believe, and science does not operate on faith. Faith is taught in churches. If you can't prove it in the scientific world, you've got no gain. These Christian fundamentalist psychotics are so power mad that they will stop at nothing. Stop at nothing. Willful ignorance, intimidation, and suppression of information are their tools. Intelligent design, abstinence-only sex ed, the new dark ages are upon us. Exactly. Exactly. But Henry Rollins, brilliant man, doesn't see it either. Religious, which is created in the brain, is the acceptance of imaginary friends or deluded concepts as if they were reality. In other words, a religious person is have a problem with the brain, is suffer from a psychosis. And religious beliefs are a psychosis. To a religious person, two plus two is equal to anything but four. That's what nobody seems to see. And guess what? These beliefs happen exactly on the excuse of Typal or schizophrenic, schizophrenia infected brain. Sorry, it's a fact. It's still different between a religious belief and a schizophrenic belief. The acceptance of bizarre beliefs as true happening in the schizophrenia. Cognitive impairments also happening in all religious beliefs. What's a cognitive impairment? Exactly the same thing happens to a religious brain, religious infected brain. The inability to, to differentiate between reality and fantasy, especially in educated people. If you're educated and you're a scientist like Francis Collins, the head of the genome product, for instance, a cry psychotic, you should be able to tell between a fantasy, a religious uh, uh, idiocy, and a tangible reality. Religious people are unable to do that. So they're psychotic. They're ill. We are evolved mutated primates that have that psychosis of God belief dormant in our brains. 
and defective brains is actually surfaced much later, despite the education. So uh, when you believe in God, you have a problem. You are uh, you are accepting two plus two equals anything but four, and this must be addressed by neurologists. Believing God is a mental a form of psychosis, a neurological disorder, mental illness. In pace de oro, less help cure it and address it and awareness and awareness. Hey, Count Putno Piso of April 2009. This is Count Putno Piso of January 5th, 2011. I know more than you do. It's been a while, but I know more than you do. The brain. It's great. It's great to learn, man. It's great to learn. You're wrong in a little few things, but I know more than you do now. And 10 years from now, I'll even know more. Let's not forget, the more we know, the more difficult it is for others to lie, including our younger selves, our past memories. That's the beauty of life. We have to Keep learning, feeding our brains. Never believe what others tell you. Never. Until you do investigation yourself and then you know. Hey, Tempus of Revelat, with time also always reveal Pacha de Orum. The movie before is a rework of April 2009, which I call a believer is a God psychosis receiver, a zero. Since I can do movies now for a longer time, I have to go back to that video that I made and update it. All the best. Bye to the world.